Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. We are back for another week. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. This is my man, Joe. And we got it. NBA star speaking up this week about what we talked about last week with Ben Simmons, Eagle season, and we're going to do a Phillies update, and that's okay. going to carry, carry us for this week. So let's get it started. Okay. All right. So we heard the comments. Should I just read the comments again, just for those who haven't heard them from NBA stars? We're talking about Ben Simmons requesting, I'll say it nicely, mm. or demanding to be traded. Okay. And podcast Barkley. And Shaq spoke up, and it wasn't very um, glowing towards Ben Simmons. Okay. So what do you think? Here, let me check it out. I'll read it quickly. I'm not going to do their voices. But so Shaq starts out. So Shaq says, don't be putting your pictures on Instagram or your Ferrari or what actress you hanging around with. When you play in a town like Philadelphia, Boston, L.A., uh, Miami, uh, a hardworking town, they don't give a bleep about none of that. They want you to come work hard and play. And Barkley says, what? That he's disappointed in Ben Simmons. When you give somebody $200 million to dribble a stupid basketball, and the only thing they ask him about is to be a better player. Your first response is, I don't want to play here anymore. That disappoints me as a player. It disappoints me as a fan. All right? And he says a little bit more. But what's your reaction to that? Um when you hear legends coming out and kind of saying a lot of what we said last week and what um, a lot of people are saying. It's fair. I think it's inbounds. You know, hopefully it resonates with him coming from his contemporaries. Mm -hmm. um, here's what I would say, kind of play devil's advocate in Ben's defense. Something I heard come out of his camp this week. And it, it made me think. It made me see things a little differently, which was when he made the um, – the announcement saying that it isn't up to him to increase his trade value to help the Sixers. Mm -hmm. And if you recall last season, before the season started, the Sixers were going to trade him for Harden. Daryl Morey basically lied and said that he wasn't going to trade him. He wasn't going to be any deal, but everybody reported he was available. Yeah. And later on, Houston confirmed that they turned down a, a trade involving Ben Simmons. So if you tried to trade me before the season started, you lied to me about it, and then at the end of the season, you just crucify me. That's how Ben feels. Then, you know, I can see where he may feel like, you know what? Let's just, let's, just let me get a fresh start. It's obvious yeah. that, you know, y'all not in love with me. So and see what you can get from me. And his people are saying anywhere but here. But I just think, and when you – when you talk about like NBA legends, mm -hmm. when you look at somebody like Barkley, you look at somebody like Shaq, that's a fraternity. I'm not talking about the guys that just play. I'm talking about the Hall of Fame, the top level players. And I think it's this whole aura that Ben carries where he carries himself as if he's a top level player, but there's gaping holes in his game. And he's doing stuff that Barkley mm -hmm. might be able to do, try to force a trade. Mm -hmm. Shaq might be able to do but i'm asking you this ben simmons and i think that's where you see these guys are kind of taking it like dude like yo see, like if if it would have been two other nba stars i say that has comparable talent to barkley and shaq i, I take it with a grain of salt also because they're tv personalities this is mm -hmm. what they do so i think a lot of current players look at them like you know, is this for ratings? Is this just, you know, a TNT thing? Or so, old man yells at cloud. Yeah, like, so like just, you know, that's, if, that's if the 90s. This is somebody, you know, who you haven't heard from that's a star player, and he comes out and make these these type of public comments. Oh, okay. But I think, you know, you got to take it kind of with a grain of salt because of, the, the, of their jobs. Yeah. But I think, like, just – Remembering how these guys played mm -hmm. and just when you talk about like, like I'm going to like the top 50 players, the top level players in the NBA, just that, those playoff performances, like I would be, I would personally be kind of offended if this guy is calling himself a star player when you see, and this does sound like old man yells at cloud. Well, I'm an old man at this point. So sue me. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be, I would take offense, you know, and it seems like they did take a little bit of offense. I would take offense when you watch that, especially that fourth quarter performance against mm -hmm. the Hawks that, okay, this guy is considering himself a high level player. 
he's considering himself to be top echelon in the NBA. But dude, passing up layups. I, I mean, listen. Are you serious? <clears throat> it seems like I'm being put in that defend Ben camp this show, and, and I'm going to see it out. Yeah. Here's what I say. I think part of being a successful organization, you know, there's a, a famous saying, know your personnel. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been proven that Ben can be a little sensitive if I'm being put in Molly. Mm -hmm. So in yeah. all year, you saw the Sixers and Doc handle him with kid gloves. And I would say at his most vulnerable time, is that the time to throw him under the bus? If you know his his makeup. Where you have to, everything has to be kid gloves. Yeah, so like, and I think that's where the Sixers drop the ball. And I think, you know, we're just so caught up on the fourth quarter. He played horrible. Like, to me, it, there's been a lot of players that's even better than him that that is that has meddled down in the playoffs. Let's that talk about that it. Series. And, but here's the thing. And then because this has happened a couple times with Simmons, mm -hmm. Giannis last year was Ben Simmons. Okay. Everybody was killing him coming off of the Bucks playoff performance. His game, what do you think? It looked, it did look different. It did look a little different in key situations. I'm gonna say the the, the only difference is he wasn't afraid to fail. That like literally that that's the that's oh, the, the point the, I made last week. Okay, but here's what I'm saying. But you still got to know the psychology of your player. And this is where I think we, we, I keep getting back to the Sixers front office. Ben Simmons mentally is not built like Giannis, or at least he hasn't shown us that, for, that thus far. So if that's the case, you have to know how to handle him. And if you're going to do something to alienate him, you have to know his temperament is, I'm out. Yeah, but here's the thing. This is where it comes back to, it's a Ben Simmons problem. Like or is it an, an enabler problem? See, then that, that's just the thing. This, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. But this, this yeah. didn't happen yesterday. Mm -hmm. This has been going on since Ben Simmons has been here. Yes. And once again, as we, as we talked about, now you want to be firm with him when you coddled him this whole time. So at what point do you look in the mirror as an organization and take your responsibility in helping to create the, the state of your team. Yeah, and, you know, especially with um, Morley in here now, like, he's he owes nothing to Benson. He didn't draft him. He's just kind of like... Does he owe him honesty? You owe every person honesty. So at, at that point, when you're, when you're a new general manager and you come in and you're dishonest to your second best player, somebody that you're counting on, what do you expect to get in return? It's like you 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 burn that that good cachet. It's like so yeah. now, you're it, it becomes a working relationship. Yeah, and, and and I think like we're so focused in on Ben that we're not looking at how we got here. And I keep saying the toothpaste is out the tube, and you have to do this early. And we talked about this before, where the young players when they, you had to get these guys when they were young. You had to get these guys to where they were young, and it keeps coming back to this isn't. And I want to stress this, and then we'll move on to the Eagles. This isn't a Philadelphia thing. This is a Sixers implosion, and I know, like what Embiid said last week, which is just completely stupid. But you got people like Barkley. You got the national media. You got like, look, Listen, Ben Simmons can't hide from this. I know he we is wrap going this to up. have to. No, I know we got to wrap this up, and people yeah. are on Embiid and what he said. And if you don't know, he he kind of took a dig at the fans. Here, these guys are in their early twenties, mid twenties, and I think we got to keep that in perspective. Sometimes we talk is in our 30s, 40, 50 year old, and we're looking at from that perspective, and we're not looking at the perspective of where, how would we have handled this at the age of 25. Yeah, and it, I, I will say this, he's trying to protect exactly. Ben Simmons. So why would you get mad at that as a fan? Why would you be upset? Because if you're reading between the lines, he's trying to extend of Olive Branch to Ben Simmons, saying, look, I still rock with you, but the people, the, I think this is where, when we had the argument, does Philadelphia run their own away? And this is the example one. If you're going to be an intelligent fan, as we're proclaimed to be, mm -hmm. see between the lines. Don't get upset with that. Understand what MB is trying to accomplish here. But you know how much emotion is involved in sports, especially in this town. And you're asking a lot of people because he didn't. Joel could have just been like, look, 
I got your back, Ben. Give me. He literally could have put this on Twitter because they love to talk to each other on social media and stuff. But does Yo, the average twenty five year old get that though? And that's the problem. We know Embiid's immature. But and that's the problem. This is the reason why this team is never going to win, in my opinion. They're always you got your star player is immature, so you're always going to be playing catch up. Immature always has to play catch up, and then you got this other guy who's got a mental block. He's got a mental block. Listen, I don't, and I don't think MB did anything wrong. I don't, I don't think he is as immature as you think he is. I think he is just going through the natural progression. And like I said, for me, it's just because he had to do it on his own, so he's finding his own way. But I don't, I don't think he's immature. I, I applaud the way he's handled the situation. Like he's trying to take ownership of the franchise, and I respect that as the best player. It's just that. You can't like he needs help. He needs somebody to show him the way. And unfortunately, he hasn't been provided that since he's been here. Sixers don't have an NBA structure and base in place. And they have an owner who doesn't know anything about basketball because he's a carpet bag. And that would be the reason I would say they can't win a championship. They can't. But look, here's the deal. And then we're going to finally move on to the Eagles. When the rats are swimming off the ship, it's time to grab a raft. And the rats have been swimming. The biggest rat was Jimmy Butler. Okay, I'm going to keep coming back to that. And they haven't recovered from that, okay? So, let's move on to the Eagles. We can talk about this Sixers thing yeah. forever. Let's move on to the Eagles. Let's Week go. one is finally here. It is finally it. here. <sighs> I heard the Eagles going to be wearing the midnight green. The Falcons are wearing those ugly new <laughs> Nike uniforms <laughs> in white. All white. Let's go. So, let's go. Let's talk about it. I don't know what to expect. I'm going to be honest with you. This team right now is a complete enigma to me. I'm I'm intrigued, but what do you think? Week one. You know what? I feel good about week one. I'm gonna tell you exactly why. I think the Eagles should be able to dominate both lines of scrimmage. I think they have the superior offensive and defensive line. Um, and I think that should give them a great opportunity to be successful on Sunday. Yeah. Um it's so on the road, week one, probably be a close game. Very uh, reminiscent. We're shooting this on a Friday, uh, the Thursday game, just, I think. But, um, yeah, I was telling my students today, I think I think it's going to be a field goal late. You know, Hurts leads them down, gets them a field goal late, 24-21. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this would be a game, I think, um, if it got away from them, I would be I would be yeah, shocked. I would be, I, I would be surprised. Um, but like I said, patience i'm yeah. just going there i want to watch but I, I do think if you're asking me this is definitely a winnable game yeah i think it's going to be my prediction we'll see if i'm right i think the eagles will get up and i think the falcons will be playing catch up the entire game probably tie it late and the eagles will come down and kick the field goal okay. you know just just when you look at level of talent honestly and like you said i think it will be a game where the two lines mm -hmm. actually control it and keep the eagles up for the majority of the game yeah, and I, I I actually think this is a this is a prime spot. I think Jalen Hurts can come out there and really set the course for his season. Yeah, this this is a good confidence game, especially if that line stays healthy. You know, to really give him time to see the field. Yeah. All right, so let's do it. Mm -hmm. Division predictions. We saw the mighty Dallas Cowboys last night. Dak Prescott is the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL. <laughs> As of last night, even though Tom Brady got his Tom Brady on, you know, the buzz was Dak is the greatest, you know. Um, NFC East, what do we say? I, I think if you're being objective about it, going into the season, it's the Cowboys division yeah. to lose. Yes. Um, I hate I, to say it. Because. I don't. I don't think the Giants are a factor at all. I think, Overrated. Yeah, New York hype. I think they're going to have a top five pick. Um I'm intrigued by Washington. I'm not a fan of the quarterback Fitzpatrick, but I think it's an upgrade of what they had last year. So I think um, it's Dallas's to lose, and Washington and Philly will be right there. But as of today, I would say Dallas should be favorite to win a division. Do you think that extra game added is going to impact the divisional race, Annie? No. No? No. Um, this, this is one of those, I think, um, if Dallas don't win the division, they're going to look back and be like, man, because I think if Philly or Washington wins this division, it might be a springboard for one of those teams for the next three to five years. Yeah, this is honestly for the Cowboys. It seems like this is it, like their window. This is their window. Like a lot of people, and then we'll kind of wrap things up. I'll get your Super Bowl prediction. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I saw Dak when he left the pocket and 
That wasn't the same Dak. Yeah, it looked like he lost a lot of foot speed, but I will say this. You know, for m m most major injuries, it takes a full year yeah. before you really get back to what you were. So this year, he's, you know, it is what it is, but I'm, I'm going to give him a full year. But listen, he, he looked a little, a lot better than I thought he would. Yeah, and he showed a lot in the pocket mm -hmm. and became better than Joe Montana, <laughs> according to national sports. Okay, Super Bowl pick. Um, you got. I was listen before the injuries. I was ready to shock the world and say the Baltimore Ravens uh, were going to come out the AFC. Um, but I, right now, we're the two starting running backs for the Ravens. Yeah, so at this point. I can't do it. So at this point, I'm going to say the Chiefs get back for the third time. They'll face the Los Angeles Rams. Stafford and I got the Rams. Winning it all. You got Stafford doing it. I, I got the Rams winning the Super Bowl this year. Yes. You got Stafford doing it. I got. I'm going to take Tampa Bay again because Brady's there. Okay. And uh, Bruce Arians, seriously. So Hello, do you, do you have a Bruce. rematch? Um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> same result. <laughs> <laughs> same exact same game. So get your chips ready, Super Bowl. You're going to be doing a lot of eating and talking. Okay. <laughs> so, so now you know. Of course, neither one of these teams won't come close to Super Bowl. Yeah, it's not even going to be close. They're both going to go like we can't even say eight and eight anymore. Like eight and nine, seven and no, whatever. I got to redo the math in my brain. Okay, so let's close things up with those. Fight and fills. Mm -hmm. Hey, they got us to they got us to Sunday. They got <laughs> they, us to the, to the to Eagles. Sunday. Yeah. So here's my deal. I need like a quick here's the thing with the Phillies, Philadelphia. You have been put in the friend zone with this team. Okay? And this is what I mean when you've been put in the friend zone. If you like my friend, if they've even been watching these games, thinking there is a pennant race, it's like, you know, you get a little peck on the cheek, like, okay, we went out for dinner. You know, you get like a little hand holding maybe, but then you lose four games in a row. In other words, you get that call about the other guy. Like Philadelphia, you have been friend zoned, is what I'm trying to say. The Phillies are the biggest mediocre tees of all time. All right. They're going to win a couple games. The only reason they're in this is because the Braves haven't declared victory. They're, they're, they're just playing. They're not serious with you. They're, 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 they're mediocre. But no, I think you're looking at it all wrong because I didn't get into this looking for a relationship. I didn't get into thinking this was going to be some long-term thing. I said, this is going to be fun. You were, look, and however far it goes, we're just going to have some yeah, fun. Yeah, without being specific. You were looking for a little action, but Listen, you're getting a peck on the key. No, but you're, you're, you're getting action if that's all you were looking for. Like, I, I wasn't looking for a wife or I wasn't looking to settle down and have kids. I was looking to have a summer fling. Yeah. And, and they provided a summer fling. But I'm saying the fling, without getting specific, I'm saying the fling was you got a little hand holding and a peck on the well, cheek. Well, then you're bad at the fling. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Philadelphia, stop I don't feel bad that way. Fling. I feel like, you know, we we got what we wanted both out of this summer relationship. You got a little attention. It was a summertime romance, and now it's the fall, <laughs> and we're going back to our wherever home is. We had a vacation over the summer, and now we're going back home. And it was a it was a good vacation. I ain't gonna say it was a great vacation. It wasn't a bad vacation. It was some ups and downs. We had fun, good memories. Now let's go back home. Let's go Eagles. <laughs> Let's go Eagles and go back to our wives. I'm going to say, and then we're going to wrap things up. Philadelphia, you have sports blue blanks from dealing with the Phillies. Stop doing that, all right? They're the biggest tease in the history of sports. They're like, ball don't lie, look at the history of this franchise. You got to do a better job of picking your flings. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia, I agree. I agree with my friend Dude here. Philadelphia, you got to do a better job of picking your flings. You couldn't get interested in that. All right, so when we come back next week, we will actually have something to evaluate with the Eagles. Finally, yeah. finally, the Phillies will be <laughs> gone. <laughs> so we won't have to deal with that. And I'm sure we'll have more Ben Simmons to complain about as well. All right? well I'm, I'm going to watch the Eagles game with my flink. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to watch the Phillies game with the, my, the one I'm chasing. <laughs> All right. So that is it for this week. Thank you very much for your time. Follow us on every social media platform. If you're on YouTube, hit that like, follow, subscribe, please. We're trying to do this a little bit different. So support us, please. 
definitely shout out to the people who've been watching. We definitely notice and we definitely appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you for all your feedback. We're gonna start doing shout outs actually to people who give us feedback and things like that. You're our first supporters of many to come. So, for my man Do, I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. Thank you. See you next week. Go Birds.